Hey everybody. Today we're plotting functions in R. Now, R is fundamentally built to plot data, not functions, but there are still plenty of situations where you might want to lay a function over your graph, so it's best to know how to do it. Um, ggplot, of course, is your best solution. That's what we're going to use here. Um, so let's start by loading it up. I'm going to load up all of Tidyverse while I'm at it with library Tidyverse. And um, let's start just by plotting a built-in function. Let's graph a normal density curve for the standard normal distribution. We're going to start just by initializing a plot with ggplot. We won't give it any arguments right now. We won't give it any aesthetics or even a data frame to start. And um, then I'm going to specify the limits. I want to specify where I want to actually graph the function that I'm going to give it in just a moment. So xlim and we'll, as usual with xlim, pass it a vector with the lower limit and the upper limit. And since we're going to do a standard normal curve, let's go from negative 3 to positive 3. Next, we need to actually tell R what function to graph. And so as you might expect, as you might guess, it's geom underscore function. The main argument that you need here is fun for function. And then you have to let R know what function you want to graph. So in this case, it's d norm. Notice that there's no open parenthesis after d norm. So um, that's all we really need. So this will be our most basic plot. There you go. You can see it. Obviously, there's lots of ways that we can improve this. Um, let's go ahead and copy and paste this and, um, and start building on this just a little bit. So um, the first thing that we might need to do is to have a different mean or a standard deviation, or more generally, pass some function other arguments. So um, in order to do that, we add an argument to the geom function and its args. Now, there could be um, one argument. There could be potentially many. And so we have to pass the arguments to R as a list. And now I'm just going to go through and name them. So let's make the mean a little bit different. Let's make it 0.1 instead of 0. And let's make the standard deviation a little bit bigger. Let's make it 1.5 instead of 1. And let's go ahead and put that on a different line as well. So um, while we're at it, I think that um, I will go ahead and remove the, that ugly label from the y-axis with, y, with a lab of y equals null. Um, why aren't you liking this? Unexpected end of document. Is that true? No, it's not true. Okay, there's a phantom error message there. Um, and let's do one more thing with this. I don't really love the default theme that ggplot gives us, so let's go ahead and do theme underscore bw. Okay, so now it's looking a bit more like a plot that you might get with another graphing app. All right, so um, the next thing we should be able to do is just to plot any function we want. We shouldn't be limited to built-in functions. So again, let's start with ggplot plus and xlim. And this time, let's go from just negative 2 to 2. And this time, for my geome function, I'm going to want my function to be user-defined. And so I'm going to define an anonymous function, in other words, a function that's only defined on this line. And uh, it's going to be a function of the x variable, and I'm just going to let it be x squared. And then while I'm at it, let's keep in this other stuff. Let's keep in the labs and the black and white theme. OK, so there's y equals x squared graphed from x equals negative 2 to x equals positive 2. There's a lot more that we could do with this, but I want to point out one thing in particular. Let me just copy and paste this to start. Um, we might want to graph two functions on the same plot. And of course, that's easy, but um, ggplot by its very nature is layered. And so we can just add another geom function on here. This time, let's do um, x cubed. And that should plot just fine. The problem, of course, is that these plots are indistinguishable from one another. It's hard to tell where x squared ends and x cubed begins. We can add color arguments to these manually so that we can tell them apart. Let's, um, let's start by doing this naively. Let's just do color equals red for this one. And for the second one, we'll do color equals blue. So we'll have a patriotic American graph to start. 
but that's um, unsatisfactory for at least two reasons. First of all, um, the, the doing color palettes by hand is generally suboptimal. Um, I'm not a good graphic designer. The chances are you aren't either, so we should use a built-in palette. Um, secondly, there's no legend here. and We'd like R to be able to remind the viewer what these graphs are actually representing. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to wrap this color thing inside an aesthetic to let R know that this is something that should be put into a, um, into a legend. And in particular, I'm going to let this color be, um, how about second degree, and then down here, oops, the color is going to be third degree. If I can, I may as well spell it correctly. And I need one more parenthesis. Okay. So now R has used the default color palette, and it has labeled things appropriately. I still don't love that um, my legend says color, so I think I'll go back and fix that. As long as I have a labs command in here, I might as well, right? So um, it's going to be um, color equals, um, I don't know, let's just put degree. There we go. Okay, so that gets you started for graphing multiple functions and, um, and getting legends that, uh, that go along with them and help you distinguish the one function from the next. I want to wrap up by doing one um, sort of very common application of this. I want to put a density curve over a histogram. So um, let's see here. I'm going to generate some random data in a standard normal distribution and then fit a histogram over it. And of course, there are many ways to do that in R, but I'm going to show you one using the geom function command. Um, since I'm going to be generating random data, let me start by setting a seed. Let's do set seed equals one. No need to be, um, no need to overthink that. And um, let's go ahead and generate some data. Let's um, go ahead and get 250 values here. Okay, um, I want to plot it, so let's make a data frame out of this. And uh, I won't be too creative with my column names, data equals data. If we like, we can view this. Let's just um, be able to actually see this data frame. So it's one column, the name of the variable is data, and it's 250 uniform, a rather randomly distributed normal vector normally distributed random values. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and plot this. ggplot, and uh, this time we will specify a data frame, and an x aesthetic should be data, and a geom histogram, of course. And um, let's see here, I am going to want well, let's just start by seeing this and seeing why, what we like and what we don't like. All right, so um, right away, I'm not loving the color scheme. I'm going to want to fix that. I'm also potentially going to want to be able to tinker with the width of these bins or to say it equivalently, the number of these bins. So um, let's go ahead and put width up here and let's do it as 0.2. And in my geom histogram, I'll do bin width equal that way. So that'll just change the appearance very slightly. Let's get a little bit of color in here. How about we have the color equals, um, maybe blue would be nice. And let's do a fill of um, light blue. So that's starting to look a little bit better. Okay, so um, now we're going to want to put a, um, a plot over this, a uh, geom function over this. So um, let's start just naively putting a, a denorm function over this, as in our first example. It's not going to work, but it'll be um, instructive, and we'll see what we need to do to make it work, hopefully. So we're going to do exactly what we did before, geom function. And the function in this case, of course, is going to be d norm. Okay, so you can kind of see the function there. It's right at the bottom. 
Um, and as soon as you see that function there, that density curve, you can see the problem. The, um, the normal distribution, the standard normal distribution, is, um, because it's a probability distribution, going to have total area underneath it equal to 1. And of course, when we plot actual data, that's not the case. So these two plots are on different scales. So we're going to want to scale up our, um, our denorm function in order to get to the proper height for the scale of our data. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to calculate the total area under my histogram. And the total area should be the bin width, which I've already said is 0.2, times the number of data points. So that's what I'm going to want to scale up my denorm function by. Now, it would be lovely if we could just do width times denorm and have it work, but that's not quite the case. Um, the function here just wants a nice, simple statement of a function. So we have to do an anonymous function here, function of x, and we'll do width times the denorm of x. And that didn't quite work. Um, oh, not because, it, because it's not width, it's area. There we go. And so that's starting to look like a bit more of a decent fit. Let me just put a cherry on top of this by doing the theme BW on that to make it look slightly more professional. All right, so that's looking like a decent um, fit to that histogram. 